Hello friends, long time no see. Um, today we're gonna do something a little bit different. I mean, a little bit the same, but a little bit different. I'm gonna be doing an empty products review video, which I've done some before, it's been forever, which is why this one's gonna be a little bit different because I have so many empty products. I'm gonna have to do speed reviews so that this isn't two years long. I have this bag. Half of it's probably dry shampoo, let's be honest. In fact, oh, yeah. one that's not Batiste, that's interesting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cans obviously if i'm going through this many i love them even without all the dry shampoo i still have a full bag so if you want to see all the things that i have completely used up and how i feel about them then you are in the right place i sorted the hair stuff out skincare and then the rest in this bag is makeup so we're gonna just go to the bag last because i did go back into hairdressing this past year i have switched over from trying drugstore products to purely professional but before committing to the salon life once again i did go through some drugstore things the first being I'm pretty sure it's called organics because it's ogx but they just seem to have pretty decent ingredients so if you do have to go drugstore try out the organics brands i've switched over purely to paul mitchell hair products and won't be buying drugstore probably ever again. Next up, I tried the Frizz Ease shampoo and conditioner. I've always wanted to try that Frizz Ease serum. I just saw it like all over Pinterest and everything. So I was like, I'm sure the shampoo and conditioner is great. It made my hair feel smooth, but like I could tell that there was like build up kind of smooth, like Garnier fruit tea kind of build up. Like you can tell it's just kind of coating your hair strands instead of actually nourishing it. So when you switch over from a bad to a good one, you can really tell the difference, but because I'd been using a drugstore for a while at the time of using this, I didn't really realize how not great it was, you know, if that makes sense. Like when I was using this up, I was like, oh yeah, this is fine. So this is the last shampoo. This is by Matrix, which is a high-end brand. However, I did pick this up at a drugstore. When you pick up professional products from a drugstore, they cannot guarantee that they are what they say they are. And I think that was the case with this. I got this at a salon that was located in a Walmart. So I thought that meant that since it was from a salon, it would be totally fine. I tried other Matrix products and loved them and that just wasn't the case with this one. So that's what makes me think there was something up with maybe the formulation of this. Don't think I'll be repurchasing this. The only other hair item I have is this pure Brazilian leave-in conditioner. I've tried a few leave-in conditioners and they've all done relatively the same thing for me. So I don't know. I did love this. Would I repurchase it? Uh. Okay, let's get into skincare. As you guys know, my favorite makeup wipes are the micellar makeup wipes. That hasn't changed. I'm sure I've thrown some empty packages away by accident because there's only two here and that just does not add up. So the other things I tried from Simple were their moisturizing facial wash and their smoothing facial scrub. The moisturizing face wash, it did not smell nice for one and I'm like a sucker for smells. Yeah, it just smells like soap. Not only does it smell like soap, it feels like soap. Like dish soap. That like slimy feeling. It's like I could never get it to rinse off of my face unless I used like a facial brush. It, I could never just use this with my fingers. Like, the feeling of it kind of grossed me out. It just was too soapy for me. So it's a no. As for the facial scrub, I actually did like this and I was going to repurchase it. The smell was a little bit off for me. Did not love the smell of this, but it did feel really nice on my skin. Very, very gentle exfoliant, which I like for my sensitive skin. I don't want anything that feels really harsh. I have since replaced this with something else because I could not find this anywhere. I think I got it at Fred Meyers originally. I could be totally wrong about that, but I just wasn't about to go through the effort of like ordering it and stuff because it wasn't like that good. This Wet n Wild makeup remover is the devil, mostly just because of this horrific applicator not applicator dispenser when this is full it is a nightmare when it's like kind of empty like this it's better because less product can fill up in this bowl but when it was full the product would fill up in this little dish and then you would release it and it would kind of stick and then it would pop the rest of the way up and spray everywhere and i know what you guys are saying you're supposed to use a cotton pad duh it sprayed everywhere like you're supposed to push it down with a cotton pad i tried that okay it would still get stuck the cotton thing whatever it would be there to kind of take the brunt of it <laughs> but it would still get everywhere it's just it's not a nice design i don't know what they were thinking it says micellar cleansing water but it feels very oily it's nothing like the micellar cleansing water in my opinion it's a no 
Okay, I have a couple of Dermalogica products. This is the concealing spot treatment. I would always put this on like my giant cystic acne and stuff and it would mostly just like soothe it and make it look not as like gnarly the next day. It never seemed to like dry anything up for me. It literally just made it like calm down. I don't have like super bad acne anymore, thank you god the thing with my breakouts is they need to be dried up because they're always big and gnarly and oozy and okay that was way too much information i probably won't be repurchasing this but i love dermalogica as a brand which brings me to the daily microfoliant this stuff is so amazing for like a daily exfoliant that's really gentle i've never used a product before in my life that made my skin feel as smooth directly after using it as this did and that's not an exaggeration i'm dead serious if you use it properly and you kind of just really work it into your skin it just takes like the top gross dead skin off and just leaves you with this really smooth feeling face it's so crazy i don't know how to explain it i'm definitely going to be repurchasing this when i get some more money because dermalogica is expensive but it's for a reason. It's really full of really good stuff. The last thing for skincare is this Purity Made Simple face wash. I don't know if I've ever loved a skincare product as much as I love this. I'm honestly surprised that there's still like a tiny bit left in here. I thought I used every drop because this stuff is expensive. It's like over $30 for this thing. It did last me a really long time and I've already repurchased it because I'm seriously so in love with this. You kind of have to try things to just figure out what works for your own skin but my skin is super sensitive and I've never felt like I found a cleanser that actually is like helping my skin it's made me really really want to try the other things in the philosophy line I definitely love it definitely recommend you try it okay I'm gonna talk about these three things I tried this eco tools brush shampoo it was awesome actually it smells really nice Mm, smells so good. It's hypoallergenic, free of parabens. I have no complaints with this. It seemed to take all of the gunk out of my makeup brushes without very much work, which is great. And then we've got the Beauty Cleanser Solid, which I did not like. It always like looked really nasty afterwards, like makeup caked on the soap. So maybe I was doing it wrong. Maybe I need to watch a video or something, but I didn't really like this. And I just think that there's better out there. Lastly, I have the Exo Beauty Flawless face sponge. This face sponge is just so hard. It felt like I was beating myself up every single time I tried using this. And maybe just because I'm used to real techniques and I'm used to a beauty blender that are really squishy. Um, I don't know. I just, this was really hard and I did not appreciate it. Let's get into makeup. The first thing I'm going to talk about, let me put the bag down because it's loud. So I have two of the Milani Make It Last setting sprays. I don't know what it is about these that you just spray it on and it makes your makeup look flawless. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I hate repurchasing these every single month because the things are so tiny. I go through these so quick. Like I'm literally halfway through another one already. But that being said, this setting spray really just settles down the powdery look so nicely, which is what a setting spray is supposed to do. So good job, Milani. Like immediately upon contact just makes my makeup look amazing. So love it. And then I also have this Catrice Prime and Fine Multi-Talent Fixing Spray. I totally would repurchase this. I loved it. The mister on it was great. The only thing is I think I like the Milani one more and I believe it comes with more anyway. Yeah, this is 2.03 ounces and this is 1.69 ounces. I did use this in kind of in places like a Fix Plus as well to wet shadows, which I know you can pretty much do with any setting spray. I get Catrice at Ulta and it's super affordable. So that's a nice thing. I don't know if it's more affordable than Milani. It very well could be. Honestly, Catrice is very affordable. It's not empty yet, but quick shout out to the Catrice Liquid Camouflage High Coverage Concealer. Recently rediscovered it because I was like, oh, I think I remember liking that. So I picked it up. I bought two more when I was at Ulta again because I'm once again obsessed with this. It is so good. But yeah, if I was in a pinch and I couldn't get the Milani one, I totally would get this Catrice one. Oh, there's one more setting spray that I missed. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Setting Spray. This um, worked really well. I did like it. It wasn't one of my favorite things. I remember I used it in a video and somebody had commented that it had this alcohol smell to them. And I was like, what are you talking about? But then the next time that I sprayed it, I totally got where they were coming from. And I was like, oh, Dang it, that kind of ruined it for me. <laughs> I don't know why I hadn't noticed that before, but I probably won't repurchase this just because since I've tried this, I found 
to other amazing ones that I like even more that don't have like a weird smell. I think this is probably cheaper than the both of them and it does work pretty well. So I did really like the mister on this one too. So let's move on to foundation. I have four different foundations here. So we're just gonna breeze through these really quick. First is the Revlon Colorstay in Buff. This is my go-to everyday foundation. So you guys have seen these in past empty videos. I'm gonna continue to repurchase these until I find a better suit for like a good everyday foundation that's not like a high-end foundation. I just don't like using high-end expensive foundations for my every single day. It's a waste of money to me. I don't know. I want one that I'm gonna be able to make work for my skin every day that's gonna last long. That just seems to be the Revlon Colors Day for me. It just continues to work on my skin. It has a really natural finish. Like it is pretty full coverage, but it just looks really nice and natural on the skin. I wouldn't use this on like a night out or anything, but I do love it for my like daily work foundation. The one next in line for like my good everyday foundation is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. God, I almost could not spit that out. This is the normal to oily and 110 porcelain, which I feel like is a little bit too light for me. So I've been mixing this with another foundation that's too yellow on me. Wait, is this the same one? Oh no. So I got a new one that's 102 Fair Porcelain, which is lighter. This isn't the one that I would mix. This one actually did match me pretty well. I have to mix this light light one with one that's a little bit darker because it's actually too light for me shocker this one though the 110 porcelain was pretty um good for my skin tone the only thing is it didn't seem to last a super long time with me my skin would start looking really oily other than that it has decent coverage it's a really good caught it it's a really good choice for a drugstore option so definitely give this a try if you haven't yet i also have the maybelline dream smooth mousse i haven't used this in forever i found this in my makeup drawer i'll show you guys how empty it was when I found it. So I was like, uh, I think I can put that in my empties. I don't see myself using that again. The only thing I really remember about this foundation is it having a really thick consistency. I did use this during the time where I was really struggling with acne and was really just looking for a nice full coverage something. So this might be worth another shot now that my skin is a little more repaired. This is 110 porcelain as well. I don't remember loving it enough to want to try it again, but if I do get the opportunity to try it again, I will. Lastly, I'm so sad this is empty because this shit is expensive and amazing. It's the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. I know there's not controversy, but there's a lot of mixed reviews and like opinions about this because it is really thick. If I wore it for a long time, I would definitely wake up the next day with new breakouts just because it is such a thick, heavy foundation. The coverage was actually full coverage and it lasted like amazing on my skin. I remember in specific one day I put it on in the morning to go to work, worked for eight hours. After work, I was going to a hockey game with my friend Danny. I thought I was gonna have to go home, like take off my makeup, redo my whole face because I didn't want to look like oil slick or depending on the day, dry crackly mess. But I remember getting home and my foundation still looking like almost flawless. And I was just like, okay, we're gonna just powder a little. Okay, we good. Like it was that easy. So I really do want to repurchase this. I was 1C1 Cool Bone, light as shade and was actually slightly too dark for me, but I just blended it down my neck, made it work. It was fine. This was like my go-to event foundation. I definitely want this kind of option in my life again because I picked up the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Long Wear Foundation. And I was hoping this would be my new double wear, but it just does not live up. This is way too yellow on me too. So I have to mix this with that Fit Me one I was talking about. I just have not found a foundation that compares to this yet. I actually only have two different concealers to talk about. The Maybelline Fit Me Concealer and the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. If you guys have been around for a minute, you'll know that this Maybelline Fit Me Concealer I'm about to say was, you guys, was my shit. I mean, I have one right here too, and I have another one, a brand new one. So like, I do still love it, but I've discovered that it's better when I do mix it with something else because it is a little bit peachy, like pink on me, which is good when I'm really tired and I have like dark circles and stuff to counteract. But on the day-to-day -day basis, when I just want to spot conceal or I just want to, you know, put a little bit of concealer on my eyes just to look a little bit more awake, this just did not match my skin tone enough to be able to get away with it on its own without any other sort of makeup. A lot like my foundation, I don't want to spend 20 plus dollars on a concealer that I'm going to use every single day and have to repurchase that all the time. I want to find a good staple drugstore concealer that I can just wear every day, go through it and just buy it without really even having to break the bank, you know? So I have been liking mixing this with the um, Catrice one because this one's a little bit yellow and this one's a little bit pink. So together. And then we have the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. 
Um, I almost repurchased this. Almost. I didn't because I purchased the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer instead to give that a shot. I found a way to make this Tarte one work for me after a lot of heartache. <laughs> Get us dramatic, but I had to play around with this a lot in order for it to not just crease like crazy. I did finish off this product by not putting it under my eyes at all. I would only use this to spot conceal my face, and that was my favorite way to use this concealer. The coverage of this is amazing. Like, I can't knock it for that at all. The coverage is freaking great. This has definitely been my favorite concealer for spot concealing and I might just repurchase it for that reason because I don't like going to my office job with full face of makeup, especially foundation. Like those are my days to kind of let my skin breathe. Loved having this on hand and I'm kind of sad that I don't anymore because none of my other concealers work for spot concealing my skin like this did. So even though I shat on it in like every single video that I used it in, I might repurchase it anyway. <laughs> Just not use it under my eyes. I didn't realize I went through two of these, but I went through two of the Maybelline pressed powders. This one is in 100 translucent and this one is in 110 porcelain. I remember using this for a while to set my face makeup. And then I remember this was my like emergency powder in my purse that I would just use for spot concealing or sometimes you're just out and about and you're too oily or whatever and you need to need a little powder. So that's what that was for me. I probably won't be repurchasing these, but this is a good drugstore option, especially with the Fit Me foundation. They work really well together. So I didn't use this up completely, but I also tried the Physician's Formula pressed powder. This one is the Mineral Wear Talc-Free Mineral Face Powder in Translucent. Definitely didn't like use this up completely, but I don't really see myself using this. It was a powdery powder, so didn't really dissolve into my skin very well. It's been a while since I used it, so maybe it's just because of like, I don't know. I don't wanna throw blame on other products when it was probably this one. <laughs> I'm just gonna say I don't really like this one. Need I say more? <laughs> you know I repurchased this. <laughs> the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer is the love of my life. Okay, I'm just gonna talk about these really quickly. The L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I've gone through two of them. And I have another brand new one right here. If you are buying drugstore because you don't want to spend as much on like high end, but you still want a good mascara, I definitely think that this is worth a shot. And also it's pretty like rose gold packaging. It just looks cute on my makeup desk. Like these just make me happy. It's very volumizing and lengthening, which is what I like. I find that they do dry up fairly quickly. But yeah, while this is good and not dried out, it is really good and not dried out. So once it dries out though, it's kind of a bummer. Wow, that is a lot of micro brow. <laughs> this is the NYX micro brow pencil in taupe. Pretty sure these are all in taupe because what other color would I use? This is basically my replacement to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. I love that pencil. It's right here. I've gone through two of them. I only splurge on an Anastasia Beverly Hills pencil every once in a while. It's like a treat yourself type of thing because I can't spend $20 on a pencil. It must be that these have like a creamier consistency because I use these up way, way quicker than the NYX ones. They are so worth $20. I just, I'm, I'm a broke bitch. I can't afford to spend $20 a month just for eyebrows. Instead I spend $20 and I get two. They are comparable, but like these are still better, you know? And then I have to just kind of shit on this brow product for a second. I bought this because of how many people had this fucking brow pencil in their yearly favorites. So many people talked about this brow pencil. Don't get me wrong, it was bomb. I loved the way that it made my brows look. I love the thin applicator on it. It's exactly, well, you can't really see, but it's exactly like the other ones that I like. They have, I think three or four shades, one, two, three, and four. And this one is number one, so it was the lightest, but it only lasted me two weeks probably four days a week. So I got eight uses out of, the, out of this, eight uses. And this was like $20. This was more expensive than the Anastasia one, I'm pretty sure. Cause this was like 20 something. And this one's 21 or 20. I don't remember. All I know is that I was so disappointed because I went to go spin it and it was empty. And I was like, no, no, this is impossible. I just bought this. Especially after using the Brow Wiz, I thought like a month was already not, not long enough. I'm not about to purchase something just to use it for two weeks. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow powder duo in taupe. I remember it just like crumbling. Like you can see it's completely empty because it crumbled from being dropped or something. I don't remember. I think I accidentally hit it off my makeup desk. I still used it for a while after that because like it still worked. It was just in a little more fine milled powder form instead of a pressed powder. But this is definitely 100% the best brow powder I've ever tried in my life. I've never used a powder on my brows that actually like worked on my skin and the brows. On myself, I have found my true love in brow pencils instead of brow powders. So I probably 
won't repurchase this for myself, but I might repurchase the brow powder kit for clients. Three more things to talk about. We're just going to whip right through them. So the first being Ciate Fierce Flicks liquid liner pen thing. I got this in an Ipsy bag and it dried out fairly quickly. I'm pretty sure I used it in like one tutorial and that's pretty much all I got out of it before I just kind of forgot about it and then it was dried up and yeah, it just didn't work enough for me to be like reminded of it, you know? The next thing, <laughs> this one's just funny because I used this lip liner only for so long. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Never Fail Lip Liner in Coral. I never even wear coral lips anymore, so this is like especially funny, but uh, I thought this was the shit. Like I used this under every single lipstick, gloss, anything that I like needed a lip liner for or even like anything that I wanted to put on. I would always put this lip liner first. It's like shocking that it's actually empty because I've had this for years. I almost want to keep it just for like nostalgic purposes. Like that's how long I've had this. In fact, yeah, I'm, I am going to keep this for nostalgia. So the last product is my favorite strip lash glue ever. This is the Kiss Strip Lash Adhesive. It's the brush on one. I just decided to switch over to the clear one. It's the same exact thing, but this one like I said, is in clear instead of black. It just seems to not clump up as much. If you like dark lash glue, um, I definitely recommend giving this a shot because it does work really well despite it being a little bit goopy and messy. That's also after a long time. Like when I first got it, it wasn't goopy or messy or anything like that. It's just gotten a little bit messy. So I upgraded. And that was perfect timing because I gotta go like now. I personally just love watching these kind of review videos because I feel like they're probably the most honest. The person reviewing the product has actually used it up completely. So I will continue to do these videos um, just as long as I keep using up products and have more things to share with you guys. Let me know what you guys wanna see next in the comments down below. I have this makeup tutorial, well, tutorial. It's a get ready with me that's kind of chatty. I have that coming next to you guys, so keep an eye out for that. And then let me know what you guys want to see after that, whether it be, you know, a challenge or a fashion video or more makeup videos or hair videos, you know, just let me know. I got you. I've also been thinking about vlogging. If you guys want to see more vlogs, definitely let me know. That's something I'm willing to do. I just have to like figure out things to do in order to vlog, you know, because no one wants to just see me chilling and watching TV shows in my house. At least I don't think so. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you really soon in my next video. Bye! the shit out of Zen. <laughs> the next micro bow, micro bow, my eyelashes keep sticking together. I'm sorry if that looks so weird, me going like, I will continue to, I will continue, so I will continue, I cannot say continue.